Previously on the Adventure Zone, they are beautiful elves. One female, one male. Uh, and they are dressed in these tight-fitting, high-fashion garments of gold and green and violet. You made it! Welcome to Wonderland! Fine, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, I got Skull. All that Skull means is, at some point in the future, you will face some pretty bad luck. You put your hand on the trust button and push it down, and then you see their decision, and in bright red letters, the word forsake appears. Welcome to the monster factory. Uh, falling down through that hatch is a cube of slime that uh, is about 15 feet tall, and then right behind it, with a pair of beautiful, beautiful angelic wings, is a humongous dire bear with bolts of crackling electricity uh, sort of wrapping around its body. Let's roll initiative. Sounds like our boys are having the slime of their lives. I can barely contain my excitement. It's the Adventure Zone. those bones. I want to hear those dice at the table. And then I want you to add your fucking initiative modifier to it. And then we're going to come up with an orderly order for this fight. Oh, we're fighting. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're fighting again. Uh, You're fighting a multiplying flying electrified dire bear and a multiplying regenerating poisonous slime. Bad Mm. news. Bad news, kitties. Uh, Magnus got himself a critical fail. That's initiative, though. It's fine. Well, yeah, but it's still a, let's see, one, a plus two, a three. Uh, 18 for the kid. Damn. Uh, I got 10 plus one, so that's 11. That's my good roll. I'll tell you guys what, something, this is just a fun, this is, you know, as everyone knows here on uh, the Adventure Zone, we routinely like to, you know, take a step out of the moment to, like, give helpful tips and tricks to people no, playing never, role-playing games never, at home. never, 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 never done this. And so here's a hof- helpful tip and trick. Um, look back over past uh, 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 character sheets to find out all the magical items and weapons you had that you promptly forgot about as soon mm. as you got them. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are great. essentially fucking demigods right now. You guys are like Benicio Del Toro's character in the fucking Marvel movies, um, and you don't even realize it. Like, uh, Dad, do you remember that you have that, that special item that lets you, like, change spells be, like by one letter or oh, some shit? Oh, yeah. I forgot I about that. I forgot about my magnetic charge. I forgot yeah. about the tarantula's bracelet. No, I mean, you guys are dummies. That's, yes. Um, Justin, Taco, you are top of the order. You have, uh, you're in this room. Uh, where there's a bunch of sort of factory equipment hanging from the ceiling that just produced these these two monsters, a multiplying, regenerating poisonous slime that kind of splorched down on the ground. It's about, um, this thing is huge. It's about 15 feet, I want to say, in, in diameter. Uh, and it's just this bubbling green sentient slime. Uh, and then flying around in the air about 20 feet up is a dire bear with long, beautiful wings uh, that uh, is sort of pulsating with electricity. Uh, and you're you're up. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna fuck around. Yeah, I was hoping. That's I mean, it's been a month. I'm. I was hoping you maybe had a course of action. Yeah. I. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cast a magical spell. Okay. On the poisonous slime. Excellent. This spell is called Flesh to Stone. Mm, I mean, it's slime. I, yeah, I would. So I it, definitely doesn't have flesh. Uh, in what? reality is that not made of flesh <laughs> it's, it's flesh is is griffin is if if the spell were called surface to stone would that would that be better for you is yeah, that where course, you want to draw a line in the sand would, but this thing is that if it had flesh then it would be a bag of skin full of fucking goo it would okay, it, what's, it would it would, it would what's be like a, it together then griffin surface tension <laughs> Yeah. What do you call it, Griffin? What do you call it when like a pudding gets that film at the top? Is that not called a skin? Well, that's a, that creme, brule, that's a creme brulee. Just no, you're talking. Hold on, hold on. Read the description of the spell because if it says flesh in the spell description, it I gotta has cut flesh. you off. It's flesh is made of goo. What mm, it? 
no, 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 I don't think so. Because <laughs> if we're doing that, then you could be like, mm, the ocean, I'm going to turn all of it to stone with this spell because the surface of the ocean is like If the flesh. ocean were a sentient being, Griffin, moving around attacking people, then yes, I would say that he would have a leg to stand on in that argument. Okay. I think I, we have I, to go with what the DM says. I can't believe it's, it's been a month and we're having an argument about whether or not slime is flesh. <laughs> it's like the body, you know? Like the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit, spirit is willing, but the slime is weak. But okay. the slime is flesh. I'm just not going to I'm just not going to cast anything then. Oh. Oh, Justin, fine. come on, come on, take don't a let Griffin wear you down. Okay, fine, fine. By the way, I'd just like to point out, it is no fun when somebody won't let you do the spell you want to do. Well, well yeah, mine you... made sense, though. <laughs> Your spells are dumb, so... Dad. Your just spells are so bad. I would Wait actually till say... later this episode, my friend. I would actually gonna... say this clip is currently being played in a top five... Uh, least appropriate <laughs> spell usage uh, compilation video on YouTube uh, right. right now, and it's, it's probably ranking in at, at number two, maybe one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna cast a different spell on the stupid ass slime. It's called disintegrate. Oh shit! <laughs> Fuck you! It uh, there's this thin green ray that springs from my pointing finger, um, but I'm gonna have it come out of my butt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this oh, is how I do. Interesting. It, yeah, it's a different thing. So it looks like a laser fart. And the target, uh, it, well, listen, it's got to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, that's not that it's thanks, Jam. I do want to ask um, you're using your butt and not the Umbra staff, right? Because if you use the Umbra staff, then you get the spell uh, bonus. I'm holding the Umbra staff with my butt, <laughs> channeling it. <laughs> It's like a fraternity hazing. Yeah, I loved when the when they recast Taco as Adam Sandler. I really <laughs> appreciated that. It was everybody, like good. everybody's busting up. That's the other thing about it. It's like everybody's just even the like, bear loves it. <laughs> You're loving it. Uh, that's a big seven. Okay, that's not going to pass. Okay, so now you are going to take ten d six damage. Oh my god! Oh. Uh, that's the one with six. It's, thanks, Papa. I don't have a six in there. How Ooh, do you not have a six? You. It comes with every board game. My daughter eats them for dice. power. Here, I got it. I got it. Okay. Uh, let's see, five. Dad, count this for me. One. Said, I got it. One. Six. Five. Eleven. Twelve. Four. Fifteen. Five. Twenty. No, sorry. One. Oh, sorry. One. Trav. Sixteen. Another one. Damn. 17. Two. 19. How many is that, Dad? Six, I think. You were it's seven. Animals. You've done seven, and it was 19. Three. That's 22. Four. 26. One. 27. Okay. All right. Uh, wow, that and was a I huge, add, huge hit um, and on then this I thing. Add, uh, sorry, and then I add 40 to that? What? Yeah. No, no, no. Is it is it 10d6 plus four? No, sir. Uh, no, sir. That's 10d6 plus 40 um, damage. Wait, re really? Yeah. It's yeah, called yeah, disintegrate. Yeah, yeah. It's called disintegrate. It's not called, like, loving caress <laughs> from a new lover. Uh, <laughs> Though okay. it is now. Jesus. Oh, if it kills it, it disintegrates, and I'm going to need to hear that. Uh, so you didn't quite, Jesus, you really swept the legs out from, that's a six level spell, right? Like you're burning yeah. the big gun. I right burned now. a six level spell. I wasn't going to fuck around. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, you, okay. Here's what this did. Um, because this is a multiplying, regenerating poisonous slime, uh, you, you, I swear you almost took it completely down with this one attack. Uh, but you uh, blasted it with the ray, uh, and some of it did get disintegrated off. Like some of its slime just sort of uh, evaporated into the air. Um, and right when that happened, it split in two uh, and became two smaller slimes. But the beam, I guess, also hit one of those smaller slimes and disintegrated it as well. Uh, and it, it kept sort of refracting like that around the room, hitting different smaller parts of the slime as it splits off. Uh, and so the only thing that's left now are three, like, pretty small, like, up to your knee-sized uh, uh, poisonous regenerating slimes. Great. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, and next up in the order is the uh, multiplying flying electrified dire bear. 
Uh, and what they are going to do is, hmm, uh, the bear's going to fly down at Magnus. Cool. Um, but before it does, uh, a, uh, a, a sort of wave of electricity comes off of it. Uh, and then, uh, it, it, it sort of flies to the side of this flying bear. And then immediately right next to it, uh, is another, uh, flying electrified dire bear, but this one's body isn't made of like bear stuff, like the dire bear says. This one is just like an, a, a projection made of electricity. Uh, so now there are two of these things one made of bear and one just completely made out of electricity. Uh, and both of them are going to fly down and uh, do attacks on Magnus. Super uh, just sort cool. of swiping down, paws first from the sky. Uh, the first one, the bear one. Uh, rolls a 21. Uh, against what? Uh, AC. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Wait, how big is it? Uh, it's, pr- I mean, it's a dire bear, so it's probably about, like, 10 feet. Is it big I mean, enough you definitely get your, use my ring? Yeah, you definitely get your ring bonus. And does the tie go to the runner in that circumstance? No, I think tie goes to the hitter. Oh. Then uh, it ties. It ties the, me. Okay, and the electric one uh, only ro- rolls a 14. That's not um, good enough. That's okay. not good enough, Griffin. You so the failed. Electric, the electricity bear comes down and swipes, uh, and you dodge out of the way. But while you're dodging, you are sort of oblivious to the bear meat bear uh, who hits you for uh, 21 damage. And Ooh. I also need you to make a constitution saving throw. Cool, cool. I'm not bad at that. Well, we'll see, won't we? Uh, that's a 17. Okay. Uh, as it swipes its claw into you, you feel like a charge of electricity kind of course through you, but you shake it off. So um, tw- and you said, uh, sorry, just to confirm, 21 points of, of damage that's uh, empirical, 21 empirical points of damage, not metric. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 21 is just a lot in one hit. That's one fifth of my life. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're, at the, we're in the end game. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Uh, and uh, with that, both bears uh, uh, sort of pull back uh, and uh, start flying back up a bit closer to the ceiling. Um, so one bear, just so I'm picturing this correctly, is entirely like, made of electricity, like Superman in like how the late fucking, 90s. How fucking rock and roll is that? And it's then really the other bear just has like a mild electrical charge, like someone rubbed a balloon on his head. Correct. Got it. Uh, the uh, three slimes. Uh, which are about knee high. Before they do anything, they regenerate. Uh, and the three slimes, which were about knee level, uh, boost themselves back up. And boy, this is going to get complicated quick. Uh, now they're about all waist high. Uh, and two of them are going to go for Taco, who uh, disintegrated their bigger form. And one of them's going to go for Merle. Um, uh, Taco, make uh, two dexterity saving. Th- Actually, no, uh, I'm just going to roll attacks because they're small now. I came up with all these great mechanics for the slime, like different attacks that it did when it was in its big form and different attacks for when it's in its small form, but you kind of <laughs> disintegrate I made it its more big annoying, form. apparently, only. Yeah. Uh, 15 versus AC? Yeah. That's a hit? That's a hit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and 19 versus AC. <laughs> that yeah. one doesn't actually weirdly <laughs> weird that's crazy how that works <laughs> uh they uh hit you for wait i thought one was hitting me uh oh no i'm gonna do you in a second uh those two hit you for 17 points of poison damage it, is that just like a melee attack ditto uh yeah i have it, the attack i have listed as pound um, okay what well, yeah i am a protection fighter okay yeah what are you doing uh disadvantage on the attack uh, you use your reaction for that, right? Yeah. So, so because so you can only so it, you can only do it once because you only get one reaction per round. Um, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it for both sure. attacks. But okay, we'll do it for the second, the higher one, the nineteen. Oh yeah, that's a uh, ten. So uh, that that gets blocked, right? Oh yeah, ten. Okay, ten. Yeah. Then you actually only get hit for 
11 points of damage. Groovy. Uh, Thanks, the chef. other one's going to come for you now, Merle. Bring it, hoss. Uh, that is a 19 versus AC. Oh. It's been brought in. Uh, it's done, it done got brought. It's uh, sound rotten right there. And that's going to hit you, oh, just for nine points of damage. Poison damage. Ah, okay. Which you may be resistant to, actually. Yeah, I do have a resistance to poison. So what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, you have resistance against poison damage, so you only take five points of damage. Nice. Okay. okay. All right. Wow, this fight was supposed to be really hard. I wish you hadn't disintegrated this big slime, Taco. <laughs> Well, um, if you'd let me fucking turn it into stone, I wouldn't have. Merle, uh, you are up next. All right, where are the three slimes? Uh, two of them are kind of on Taco, and one of them's on you. Not on you. They, 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 they're not, like, consuming you or anything like that. But they're How right. far away from each other? Um, I mean, the three of you didn't... I, you didn't specify that you, like, moved around when you came into this room, so I'm assuming the three of you are within, like, five feet of each other. So they are within five feet of each other. Okay. Then at a point uh, 10 feet away from us. Sure. Uh, and yet. Encompassing encom- them. I gotcha. Encompassing them. I'm casting Flame Strike. Holy shit. Nice. It is a 10 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. Hey, bud, I got news for you. That's going to hit those fucking bears, too. Uh, and each creature takes 4d6 fire damage and 4d6 radiant damage. Okay. They have to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, boy. You guys are really playing to these slimes' weaknesses, huh? <laughs> hey, this ain't our first day on the beach. Um, slime 1 fails. Slime two passes. What was it? What was the dexterity saving throw? It's uh, your. It's eight plus your spell casting modifier. Uh, eight. Why do I never remember my spell casting modifier? I don't know, dude. Write it in a get a buy a red marker. I'm gonna write it, write it down. Right I've got it. Edition. I've got it on this screen you okay. gave me. This magic screen plus eight. Okay, so sixteen. So then plus. Okay. Uh, so the first one failed. The second one passed. Third slime failed. Jesus. Uh, the meat bear crits. The electricity bear does not crit. Uh, okay, so you're going to hit two of the slimes and the electricity bear with this. Right. So I'm rolling four fire damage. Uh, 46, okay. yeah. Oh, I thought you said 46. Are you counting for me? Yeah. Four. Four. Five, three. So that's four, four, five, three. Sixteen. 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 Fire damage. And here's the radiant damage. Two, four. Dropped it on the floor. Six. It's a well, six. Well, swear to God. He swears to God. He's not Travis. So we can probably believe him. Uh, mm-hmm. Fair, fair. Cuts deep, but it's fair. And one. And one. That's how you know it's legit. Thirteen. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so sixteen fire, thirteen radiant. Right. You disintegrate only- the two other slimes. Woo! Uh, uh, also, this does half damage to everything that passes the. Exactly. So what was the to- what was the total damage? Twenty nine. The electric bear is gone. That that projection uh, disappeared basically as soon as it was hit. Um, so it's just gone and 29, so, uh, 16 damage, uh, for the dire bear and the other slime. Okay. This other slime is now wait, like wait, wait. half of 29 would not be 16. You're right. It would be 15 rounding up, right? Yes. Okay. Rounding yeah, up yeah. 15. Uh, then, okay. Then yeah, you just save this slime a little bit of trouble. This slime, the remaining slime that passed the save, uh, is now like, it's like a, it's like somebody opened a canister of Gak and just upended it on the ground um, <laughs> and is, like, ankle high. Uh, the dire bear is still looking pretty fucking good, though. Really? Okay. Did I just kill three creatures? That's great, Dad. Congratulations. Yay! Hey. Christmas came early this year. Uh, 16, not please, all bad. Please, Taco <laughs> and Merle, keep track of the spells that you have 
use. Oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I got you it. Because, I mean, yeah. you're, burning, you're burning the big guns, and that's cool, and you're trivializing this fight, and that's great and all, but you gotta, you got to mark it down. I've had yeah. a long time to think about what Magnus is going to do. Good, because it is your turn. And it's all going to hinge <laughs> on one question, Griffin. Okay. We're in a room with a bunch of machinery, right? Mm-hmm. Are there any, like, pipes or gears or anything near me? Um, there are, I mean, there, there is some, like, there's no loose no, metal. No, 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 I attach to the ground. I get that. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could probably, there's some machinery lining this circular room, and then hanging from the ceiling is a bunch of, like, big-ass industrial machinery. Perfect. So if you wanted to, like, you could, you could probably find yourself a pipe or something. I have a complicated plan that I'm going to do. Oh, Jesus. It's been a while since I did a ridiculous maneuver. All so right. here's what I'm going to do. First, step one, use water skin on rope. Soak rope. Step two. What are you? What is this quest for glory fucking puzzle? So what is this King's this is Quest be, puzzle? This is, put, the, put the rubber chicken on the pulley. And uh-huh. then... Step two, <laughs> tie rope to chance lance and grappling hook. Okay, for, I, I, oh man, this is, you gotta, you gotta, I need you to sympathize with me, Trav. This uh-huh. is so much stuff to take place in uh, six I, seconds I've of I've just been standing, no, I've just been, I've been doing this while Merle and Taco and the Dire Bear and everybody have been doing everything. I've just been like slowly like wetting the rope and tying the rope to, these are all I would say simple actions, Griffin. And plus at this point, I get like four attacks. So, like, you can take That's three fair. of my tax yeah, away you burn, to make if you this burn happen. Your, I'll make you a deal. If you burn your one daily bonus action. Uh, actually, I think you have two and you used one in the woods. If you use your other one for this, I'll say then it's then you can do all this. All right. I'll do that because Taco used the level six spell and I want to do something cool, too. All right. So, I'm going to hook my grappling hook. Since I've already used it in the woods, I can't fire it again. I'm just going to hook it on a piece of metal. And I'm going to throw the chance lance at the electrified dire bear. But okay. first, but first, I'm going to say you've been a bad boy and you're grounded. And then I'm. Gonna oh, I it. see. Uh, okay, make an attack roll. That is eighteen plus nine, twenty-seven. So you basically attach this thing to some machinery while it was wet, and okay, and then right. Yep. You are tethering this thing with a wet rope to some machinery on the ground. Correct. Okay. Uh, do you imagine? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. no, it's wet and wild. Um, <laughs> sorry. But do you imagine wet ropes are conductive? More so than dry ropes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll grant you that. Thank you. Um, roll. Uh, roll damage. Oh yeah. Um, I hope he just kills it. <laughs> Nothing would make me happier. Let's see. This one d eight. Three plus five, so that's eight damage. Okay, yeah, I like that it's actually not very much. Um, because what this does is you see, like, straight up Benjamin Franklin flying a fucking kite. You see the, this bear's charge of electricity uh, uh, shoot down the rope. Um, and you actually narrowly, like, avoid it as it travels down the rope. And it hits this ring of machinery on the ground of this circular room. Um, and simultaneously, these interconnected machines just shoot a shower of sparks up into the sky, and it looks fucking badass. Uh, and this bear, uh, its wings, uh, they, they, they kind of burn off, uh, and there's a horrible smell in the air, um, and it comes crashing down to the ground, but it lands uh, on, on all fours and roars at you menacingly. Uh, but you have you have grounded the electrified multiplying multiplying dire bear. Okay, now I'm going to use my second attack. Okay, to attack it, you know, with the uh, with the rail splitter. Okay. Oh nope nope that's a crit one. Yeah no that does goodbye not this d twenty. <laughs> okay, you, that's you, two you, crit ones with you. You do some badass shit and send this dire bear crashing to the ground. And as you approach it to attack with your axe, it looks at you with uh, a sense of respect. But then you like whiff so bad, so hard, and the bear's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, back to the top of the order. We still have a very small slime. Uh, and we have the grounded dire bear. Taco, before you do anything, 
you um I want you to make a dexterity saving throw and you're gonna have some disadvantage on it. So you're gonna okay. roll twice and take the lower of two results. Okay. What was that first one? Four. Second one's a ten. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if you should have disadvantage on that, but regardless, both of those um, fail. Something, something unlucky happens. Hachima, oh no, oh no, oh beans, <laughs> <laughs> oh dang! You feel something um, tap your shoulder, uh, and you hear clink, 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 uh, and you look down, and there is a bolt. Like a like a nuts and bolt bolt laying on the ground, and not a second after you see that bolt on the ground, one of these giant pieces of like a washing machine size piece of industrial machinery uh, falls from the ring on the ceiling and lands on you. You're gonna kill America's favorite wizard, <laughs> as played by Adam Sandler. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, how much, your butt hey, hey, how much? How much? How uh, much health does Taco have? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh, tell me. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna tell you. How's uh, how's what's uh what's 39 points of damage do for you? Nah, I'm good. Okay. Um, you are also pinned under this heavy piece of machinery. I'm not good. <laughs> Hold on. He's well, not I don't happy. Give, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. <laughs> Shit um, is whack. You're you're pinned. You're prone, and you are pinned under this huge heavy piece of machinery. Let's say it's like. It like uh, it, it hits you at the waist, and so you are pinned under this thing, and you're like you're fucking like we don't really get into this. Like we always talk about sort of in the abstract damage, but you're like hurt. A fucking washing machine just like fell ten feet and landed on you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where you're at, and it is know, now pretty, your turn. Pretty, un- it was pretty unlucky. It's my turn to do something, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. What does prone mean exactly? Like, like- uh, you can't move. Um, and mm. if you make like a melee attack on something that isn't prone, you have disadvantage. There's a there's a few sort of effects. Okay. Um. Uh, usually, getting up from prone takes your entire move action, but you have a washing machine on you, so um, you you would need to deal with that before you can stand up. Obviously. Uh okay. So is it an actual washing machine? I mean, are we? No, that's just what it looks like. It is. It's a piece of. It's a piece of like uh like assembly line uh, machinery that you can't really identify. It's just that's the size of it. I'm gonna cast blink. Okay. It's verbal. Ooh. All right, and I vanish into the ethereal plane. Okay. Uh. Oh man. Okay, so you vanish into the ethereal plane. Uh, other boys, you hear chunk as the uh, machinery falls the rest of the way. Uh, now that it, it it's not being held up by Taco's legs. Um, what do you see? Fuck. I want I want you to see something cool in the ethereal plane. He sees Rogue One two days before it comes out. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You see it. And it's surprisingly, it's pretty good. Loving it. Was Loving it. Psyched it. about a side story, but mm, really, really well made. Um, in the ethereal plane. Oh, okay. I think I know what you see. It's, hey, it's been a while since you blinked, hadn't it? Yeah. It's been a few story arcs. The last time you blinked was, I believe, in the lobby of the Gold Tru- uh, Goldcliff Trust, the bank. Um, and you saw mm-hmm. some creatures, small creatures with these bright white eyes, um, uh, that were kind of looking at you, kind of watching you. Uh, and there were like a few in that in that ethereal version of the lobby. Um, you see them again in the ethereal version of this room, but mm-hmm. Taco, they are lining the walls. There are hundreds of them, um, all all looking at you. Um, and as soon as you appear, and as soon as you see them, uh, they just sort of scurry back through the walls and blink out of out of existence but for a Charming. second what, you what s- do they look like they look like um compare them to a muppet hmm that's a tough one um they look they look vaguely humanoid they have sort of um long featureless arms and legs um and then 
uh, sort of uh, uh, almost kind of cute, I guess. Like uh, Salacious Crumb? I don't know. I mean, yes, sure. Uh, uh, th- but their, their defining feature are their like big old white eyes. Um, and th- their bodies are white too and made of sort of an ethereal. I mean, everything in the ethereal plane is made of this kind of like wispy white material. Um, and, and so, yeah, these, these little like <clears throat> one foot tall humanoid, vaguely humanoid uh, beings were kind of spying on you. And they disappear Great. as soon as you blink. Great. Uh, but you are freed from the uh, from the machinery, and you can stand up. But I believe that's your move and your action. So I think you're done. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, next in the order is the dire bear, uh, who's, I mean, uh, the first thing that the dire bear does is roar, and another wave of electricity comes off of him. And now there is another electrified dire bear. Um, well, uh, just one, because Merle destroyed the other one. Uh, and the two dire bears are both going to come at Magnus again, because he keeps stepping. I keep poking the bear. You keep poking the bear. <laughs> um, actually, only the electric bear is going to come in for that swipe attack. Uh, the electric bear rolls an 18. That is a miss. That's a miss. Okay. Uh, you nimbly dodge out of the way of the electric uh, bear swipe. The bear bear is going to charge up a beam of electricity uh, that he shoots at the ground in your direction, and it kind of makes uh, a small explosion. And actually, I'm going to need... Uh, oh, Taco, you're in a different plane, but Merle and uh, Magnus make a dexterity saving throw to get out of the way of this explosion. Let's see. Okay. Dex. I'm laughing my ass off. 18 plus 2, that's a 20. 17 plus 1, Fuck that's an me. 18. Danger squad. Well, I switched to my good D8. Or my yeah, good well, well, I, like, like, don't go crazy. I got, <laughs> somebody dropped a washing machine on me and I got squished into a ghost. <laughs> so it's like not, it's not foolproof. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're, uh, not, every- we're not firing on all cylinders. Everybody dodges out of the way of the both bears' electric attacks. Uh, next in the order is the little slime that regenerates. <laughs> it regenerates, and now it's not so little anymore. Uh, in fact, it's about back up to knee height. Um, and it is going to take a swing at... Um, I think it saw that its, its brethren... Uh, didn't really make much of uh, make much headway hitting Merle, so it's going to hit Magnus. Uh, Twenty-two versus that AC, hits. and you definitely don't get your ring. This thing is adorable. No, I, I no, I get it. I just got bit by Ditto. I know what's up. Uh, that is fifteen points of poison damage. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. That sounds sounds a boot right. Merle, you're up next. Update me. Magnus? Oh, I'm fine. That takes me... You said 15, Ditto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at 75. I'm fine. <sighs> you got this All right, slime. So you have I... a slime that keeps regenerating. You have a bear that is still looking pretty healthy and an electric clone of that bear. If if uh, if I cast healing, I can't heal Taco, correct? No, he is not in the same plane as you. I cast Wind Wall. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Wind wall, a wall of strong wind rises from the ground at a point you choose within range. You can make the wall up to 50 feet long, 15 feet high, and one foot thick. You shape the wall in any way you choose, as long as it makes one continuous path across the ground. When the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a strength saving throw. A creature takes 3d8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save. Uh, or half as much on a successful save. Or half as much on a successful one. Uh, interesting. Also, uh, it keeps fog, smoke, and other gases at bay. Smaller, smaller uh, flying creatures or objects can't pass through the wall. Uh, wow, this is a cool little spell. Okay. Uh, so Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. So I'm going to say that the, you could probably get these three remaining enemies in a line uh, and get the wall under them, which I'm assuming you're doing. Yes, that's exactly uh, what I'm okay. doing. <clears throat> the dire bear, uh, meat meat bear is going to go first. Strength saving throw, uh, which this thing's actually pretty good at. Uh, yeah, that's a twenty one. The electric bear. 
did not save. Uh, and the slime also did not save. Okay. Uh, so the small slime and the uh, electric bear didn't save. The meat bear did. All right. So 3D8. Eight. Nice. Two. Ten. Six. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, the wind wall, as soon as it, like, touches the electric bear, uh, it just disappears. Um, the slime gets blown upward uh, into one of those pieces of machinery in the ceiling, and it just splats and is gone. Uh, the slime has been vanquished. Uh, the dire bear gets blown backwards a little bit and takes... Eight damage, uh, and is only just now starting to show some signs of wear and tear. Oh, crap. Yep. Uh, next in the All order right. is... I never thought I would say this out loud, but th- thank God for Merle. Yes! <laughs> yeah! yeah. Thank God for Merle! Uh, and only one person's doing any damage. Well, aside from Taco disintegrating the slime, which still... That, was a, that nice. helped me. That um, helped me in my campaign. Magnus? Thank Pan. I'm sorry. Thank Pan. Okay. Magnus, you are up. I'm going to reach into my pocket okay. and pull out a handful of jerky. And I'm going to kind of wave it in front of the bear. Oh, trying my, to do sweet some, like, my sweet boy. My sweet boy. Shit. Trying to mesmerize him with jerky. Is it having any effect? No. <laughs> okay. This thing only eats one thing and it's batteries. Then I'm going to take a bite of the jerky and flip him off real hard. And that's <laughs> and your say, turn? No, no, no. That's how, those are all free action. That's Flipping flavor. off is free action. I think. Oh, okay. That's that's how D and D works. Let you me just check tell my me, guide. You just tell yeah, me what free actions it is. are. It is yeah. uh, flipping off is free action. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch to put my shield away. Okay. To switch to two handed rail splitter and attack. Okay. This old chestnut. Mm-hmm. That's seventeen plus nine twenty six. Yeah, that's a hit. And it's a D10. Can I? Oh yeah. So then eight eight points of damage again. Okay. Um. And I'm also going to. You know what? I'm also going to go ahead and use uh, goading attack. Okay. Um. When attack lands. Uh, yeah. It has to attack you, or else. Well, it has to roll a save, right? Unless, yeah. Yeah. So you got to beat uh, sixteen. Uh, I did not. I rolled an eleven. Yeah, okay. So it either needs to attack me or have disadvantage. Is that right, the sound second. of the, is that the dire bear like make it like That's no, the dire bear getting so pissed. Yeah, so dire bear either needs to attack me or have disadvantage. Okay. Uh and and then I'm going to attack again with the two-handed axe for my yep. second attack. Uh well that's probably not going to hit. 7 plus 9 16 versus AC. Yeah, that's a hit. Oh, um, really? Yeah, do you want to help your dog? Teresa's daughter. Sounds like she's doing pretty good. Yeah, and it's a healthy a, it's a healthy sounding pup. We've had a lot of uh, packages delivered to the house because it's the holiday season, and Buttercup mm. fucking hates it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, okay, roll damage. Um, that's D ten. Six plus nine, fifteen. Okay. Oh no, sorry, plus five, uh, eleven. So nineteen points of damage total. Cool. Uh, all right, this thing's starting to look pretty bad. Uh, and then I'm going to use cunning action uh, to get away. Yeah. Okay. To disengage, but just like back ten feet. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Next in the order is Taco. Taco, you are in the ethereal plane. Um, you can you can move around and pop out and take an action at at will. Uh, yeah. I, I actually I automatically pop out at the beginning of my turn. Oh, I okay. Realize. Yeah. Um, where did you move to while you were in the? Well, you just stood up. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I basically just stood up. So you're stand, um, you're basically pot back in the real the the material plane, and you're standing in front of that piece. I'm of near my definitely. body, but or, or I'm I'm near where the thing fell. Yeah, but gotcha. I'm farther as far as I could get away from the bear. How's the bear looking? Uh it's it's bloodied. It's uh yeah. Uh, actually, while it, it, you don't see blood coming out of it, you see sparks. Oh, cool. Oh, oh this wait! Is that big ass bear from the Dark Tower series. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Also, more do from Brave. There's a lot of big bears in in pop culture. Yeah, the big polar bear from Golden Compass. How do you the dad remember from anything? Bernstein bears. How do you remember any? Yeah, the dad from Bernstein bears, famous mechanical bear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I had you kids. 
<laughs> I'm all cyber parts. Paddington at the very end when the, the magic spell hits him and he turns into a fifty foot high bear and mm-hmm. goes yeah. crazy. Hey Taco, you know, what's this? What's this? Just, what's the magical plan, Taco? Uh, we talk about cinematic bears. We can talk about bears some more. Do you guys remember Corduroy? Oh, I just really don't want this episode to be this whole fight. I would like to do other <laughs> stuff as well. Uh, what? So he's is he still tethered? Um, kind of yeah, you know what? He is, but the machinery is kind of, it's it's deactivated. But he is still, yeah, he's still, I mean, Magnus, you didn't retrieve the Chance Lance, right? Correct. Um, which you can do magically and at will. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's still in him, and the rope has still got him. Uh, it's like through one of his, his legs, and there's a lot of sparks coming out of that leg. Oh. Yeah, um, no pity for the bear. Sorry. Yeah, I don't feel bad for the bear. Um, I just don't, I, I was trying to think of... Something fun to do, but I feel like maybe I should just attack it. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be fun. That could be fun. It's fun in its own way. Yeah. Um. Okay. I. You know what? I'm just gonna cast. Um, I'm just gonna cast Ice Storm. Oh fuck! Been using a lot of elements. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Done. Um. He has got to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Seven. So not great. Uh, just a forty high cylinder, forty foot high cylinder of rock hard ice is just pounding into the ground. Okay. In, in just a, in, super aroused ice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's near the edge of the cylinder, so we're not taking any damage. Uh, I know I'm doing there. Yeah, no the room's bigger than twenty feet, foot radius, so you could position this further away. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get, uh, t- two D eight, uh, bludgeoning damage. Does this include the slimes? Are there still Five. slimes? No, no slimes, slimes are, are dead. Okay. 11 bludgeoning damage and one, four, seven, seven eight. eight, eight cold damage. So how much total? Uh, 19, 19. Okay, uh, you you create this column of frost uh, that is so thick that you kind of can't see through it, uh, and the bear starts to charge you uh, to try to escape from this column of frost, uh, but he doesn't clear the frost, and as the column dissipates, uh, you see this bear is frozen solid um, and defeated. Are we out uh, of combat? He, yeah. I whack and him I with should- my ice. Or with my axe. Hey, with uh, my axe. I'm going to shatter sounded, it. It sounded like my, uh, Merle also wanted to do that. Oh, I think okay. it's a race to the finish. I no, kick it over. I know. I was going <laughs> to use my I was going to use my spell speak with animals to say screw you, bear. Okay. And then Good. I hit him. Then I hit him with Good. the axe. Good spell slot usage. So everybody um, just kind of teabags this bear. Um <laughs> uh and, oh, and then Taco falls over and starts vomiting blood. Who? <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. He's hurt very badly. He's <laughs> injured very badly. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marl's just screaming at a bear while Magnus kicks it on the ground. Can I cast yeah. Mass Cure Wounds? Sure. Yes. I cast Mass Cure Wounds. Okay. Uh, 3d8 plus my spell modifier. So it's great. One. Eight. Two. Jesus. That's 11. You just went and got me a Coca-Cola. <laughs> Uh, plus eight, so nineteen. So Mom um, sheepishly hands me an, uh, three ibuprofen one, and takes one back to save for later. Actually, um, you cast that spell, the mask your wounds, and uh, the three of you feel like you feel some of your wounds closing up. Um, but Merle, something like feels off while you're casting this spell. Like you, you are channeling Pan's divinity every time you sort of cast one of these divine spells, um, and it's it's not ah, it's not as as strong as it usually was, and so you actually only heal uh, everybody for uh, eleven points of damage. <sighs> and then, as soon as your wounds kind of get stitched up a little bit and healed, you hear those two voices again. Uh, and you see the the uh, the two people that you saw, the two elves that you saw uh, when you first came into Wonderland, 
Um, and the male elf says, no! God, I gotta remember, Jesse James, right, Jesse and James from Pokemon. Now, hold on just a second, what do you think you're doing? And the female elf says, uh, that's cheating! You know the rules, once you sacrifice something here, you don't get it back! Uh, and the three of you are each hit for 11 points of necrotic damage, and the wounds that you just had stitched up uh, they open back up, and you are just as bad off as you were before the heal. Wait, because hold on. in Wait. Wonderland, there is no healing. Well, what? Snapple. Hey everybody, it's Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master, your best friend, and your sommelier. Try this wine. It's red. Thanks for listening to episode 53 of The Adventure Zone. It's the third episode in our Suffering Game arc, um, which I'm hoping to keep pretty short because we're kind of getting down to it now. Um, Thank you all for bearing with us uh, over the past, uh, I don't know, month, two months or so, uh, as... Uh, Travis and I both have had babies at this point. Last time I spoke to you, wasn't a dad. Now I am. That's pretty f- fucked up, if you think about it. Um, so, yeah, it, things have been a bit bumpy. We appreciate you uh, sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed both of the live episodes. Uh, they were a ton of fun to put on, and I think they, they turned out really well, and the response has been super, super great, and we appreciate it. Um, speaking of non-standard episodes, uh, because the holidays are coming up, and um, most of us, not me, I have a, like 18-day-old baby, uh, most of us are going to be traveling, though, for the holidays, and we, we have these newborns, and so uh, we're going to put up one more episode uh, that will be a, a, special, a special episode. This one will actually be another episode from the Flophouse Gang. It'll be another Switcheroo episode. Um, I think they did a great job with the first one, and uh, Stuart uh, Wellington from the Flophouse, who DMs the game, uh, we we had a chance to talk about what he was going to do. Uh, we hung out a bunch at Max Fun Con East uh, with this with this this new episode. Um, I'm super excited for you to hear it. That one's going to be up on December 29th. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to do the rest of this episode, obviously, and before we get to the rest of this episode, I'm going to sell you some stuff. I want to tell you all about NatureBox. It is a service that's near and dear to my heart and even nearer to my guts, because that's where the food goes when I eat it with my food hole. Uh, NatureBox is the best way to get snacks that actually taste great and are better for you, created with high-quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. Uh, They have so many options for you to choose from. So, so many great things like crispy snickerdoodles, cashew crumble, uh, dark cocoa nom noms, mini Belgian waffles, lemon tea biscuits. Uh, No matter what your your tongue likes, maybe it likes some weird stuff. I don't know. Nature Box is going to cater to you. Uh, And they they deliver them right to your door, and you get them, and you eat them, and there's new snacks each month, so you never get bored. Um, Right now, you can save even more on uh, a, a Nature Box box. Uh, because they are offering Adventure Zone fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash adventure. That's naturebox.com slash adventure. Get 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash adventure. Go there, get some snacks. You're going to love it. Uh, I have a few Jumbotron messages for this episode. Uh, I have some, I guess, kind of bad news. Uh, Like I announced in the last couple episodes, uh, we put up all of the spots for 2017 on sale, and they are all gone. We have no more Jumbotron spots for 2017, uh, which I know is kind of a bummer, if you wanted to get a message on the show uh, and didn't get a chance to, sorry. Um, but thank you all very, very much for your support of the Jumbotron. Uh, this first Jumbotron is about Empire of Imagination, Gary Gygax and the Birth of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a new book uh, from Michael Whitworth uh, that is now available in paperback. Uh, you can find it in all major bookstores and online. Uh, it's got a new forward from Doom creator John Romero, uh, and it's also available in audiobook uh, by Audible, narrated by Being Human star Sam Whitworth. Uh, it's an Amazon Best Book of the Month uh, a winner for October 2015, uh, a geekdad.com Best Book of 2015 winner, and uh, here's a review from Booklist, which says, uh, for fans of role-playing games and D&D specifically, the book, uh, this book is required reading. Uh, so it seems like this kind of splits the uprights of our, uh, of our audience. Um, so if you want to know more about how D&D got created, check out Michael Whitworth's new book, Empire of Imagination, Gary Gygax, and the Birth of Dungeons and Dragons. 
Got another Jumbotron message uh, here. This one is for Lara, and it's from Jesus and Fam, who says, Hi, Lara. We are so proud of you. You just finished a wonderful thesis film and graduated. We are about to celebrate our fifth anniversary, and oh yeah, happy birthday. With all these events over uh, these three months, hopefully we'll hit one of them. We love you and wish you the best of luck with your internship, and we know you will have a bright future. Now, I appreciate sort of the scattershot, sort of spread fire approach, hoping to get one of these uh, dates in the three-month window. Now, this message was uh, supposed to go up on June 2nd, so we did whiff, we whiffed it by a bit. We whiffed it by a bit. But, uh, Laura, it sounds like you're having a banner year. Congratulations on all of your accomplishments, and uh, happy birthday. And, and anniversary. My God. Uh, one last message here. This one's for Rebecca and Wayne, and it's from Kenny and Liz, who says, Bix and Olive, congratulations on your engagement from Simpleton Half-Orc Dennis and your fumbling DM. Who'd have thought a bookish, possibly gay elf lady and a bumbling, sunburnt dwarf could make such a great pair? May your lives together be filled with 20s, and may you be strong enough to deal with the ones when they come. Also, my hands are rats. Congrats! Um, that's either a, a fun in-joke between two uh, players in the same D&D group, which, you know, we get a lot of in the Jumbotron, or this is some horrible affliction. And if that's the case, uh, please donate to Rat Hands today. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. If you use that, you might end up as a character on the show, because that is uh, basically exactly what happened to uh, Cam, Cam Marshall, Splarf, Sparf, wow, Sparf Lord on Twitter, uh, a character that you're about to meet here in a bit. Uh, it's also what happened to Rowan, polite botanist uh, uh, named for, for Rowan. Uh, Antonia, Antonia de Pieri, uh, Tonya Rina. I should really practice these names before I just run at them. Uh, we appreciate everybody tweeting about the show. Uh, we don't pay to advertise the show at all. And literally the only way that this community has become as uh, as big and as fucking cool as it is is because of you all. Uh, it's because of word of mouth. So anything you can do to keep that going, iTunes reviews, ratings, uh, just sharing it with a friend, we appreciate that so, so, so much. Uh, that's it for this uh, ad break. Thank you all very much for sticking with us. Again, the next episode is going to be a uh, Flophouse Switcheroo app uh, featuring the same characters from the first Flophouse Switcheroo app, uh, and that's going to go up on Thursday, December 29th. And then, starting in the new year, gang... We are going to get down to it. Uh, the, the, I've got the end sort of in sight. Um, it's still going to be a while, uh, but uh, basically it's just going to be full steam ahead into the conclusion. And then I feel like I should say this every time I talk about the end of this campaign. Of course, the podcast is going to keep going. We are talking about uh, what is going to happen next, but the Adventure Zone will continue no matter what. We promise this show is too much fun, and it's too creatively satisfying for us to stop doing it. So the show will continue even after this campaign ends. Um, so, yeah, we're excited to get to it. Next episode, Flophouse Switcheroo, Thursday, December 29th. We will see you then. Bye. If I die, I don't have to still be on the podcast, right? <laughs> like, I can go play Final Fantasy or something and just get a chill going. Like, Dad can be in here. But I'd you have to keep wasn't. listening. You have to keep listening. Oh, uh, I don't feel like I do. I'll do the down. I'll download it. I think if you die, you have to move over to the loser's couch to be interviewed by Penn Jillette. <laughs> So you were kidding. You were kidding about the not healing. No. So after uh, what's Merle the- going to do if he's not able to heal everyone all the time? Small <laughs> <laughs> character. After these two uh, sort of uh, fantastic looking, sort of pseudo spectral elves uh, reveal to you the one of this one of the core rules of Wonderland, um, they kind of grin. Um, and the male elf says, uh, "Great job! Now smile and show your opponents how well you did." And then the two of them disappear, and uh, one of the segments of the exterior circular wall of this room turns into like almost like a huge LCD screen. And uh, on that screen, standing in a room that kind of looks like your own, except it's basically empty uh, and, and kind of all lit up, you see two just nasty-looking halflings. And they're dressed up in adventuring gear, 
Um, Ugh. and they, they look up at your screen almost like they can see you just as well as you can see them. And the two voices say, these two travelers are making great progress through Wonderland. They chose forsake when you chose trust. So you have them to thank for that extra difficult ah, challenge you just faced. I, uh, I take an action surge to flip them off real hard. Is that what you want, Griffin? Uh, as you do, you realize both of them are flipping you four birds combined. I, I like look at Taco and Mro while I'm still holding up both middle fingers. Like, come on, go, come on, guys, go on, help you're me gonna out. Make that, you're going to make that mist come out of your mouth. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, as you flink, you, thank you, Merle, as you flip them the bird a little bit, Sorry. that black mist comes out of your mouth. Sorry, Magnus. Sorry. Instead, of, okay, I remember very, as soon as the, and I turn it into like a wave and a thumbs up. They just flip you even harder. They like, they like flex. They like flex I, to get those fingers going. I give them like a, you know, I point to my eye. I make a heart over my heart and I point at them. This uh, is like Johnny Cash on stage double flip. Yeah. Wow. So I puke some blood. These two are just, <laughs> you see these just two nasty looking shitheads and the screen flips off. Well, after, as they're flipping, as everybody's after flipping, they, they off, flip off. The screen flips off. Um, and, from somewhere in the room, you hear another voice, and it's not the voice of these two elves. Um, it is another voice, and I'm going to come up with it right now, just sort of using my patented technique. <laughs> uh, by which I mean I'm going to take a drink of water. You hear this voice from somewhere in the room say, um, Guys, who should I do? Give me an idea for a voice, please. It can be anything. Do it- something husky. You haven't done husky. In Andy, a long Rooney. Time. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. Really? You ever wonder why you roll dice? Okay, that can be good. Wow, you guys got boned that round, huh? Why didn't you pick Forsake? Y'all need to study some game theory. So it's Guy Fury. <laughs> it's, is it Twitter? Uh, <laughs> uh, you hear this voice coming from the room, and it's not like the elves' voice, which is just coming from like an omnipresent everywhere like it is coming from it sounds like to your right and below you uh and it almost actually sounds like it's coming from one of the pieces of uh machinery on the uh, exterior wall so is it Hello? coming from one of the pieces of machinery on the exterior wall i mean it's coming from that direction who okay who goes there hello hey uh, and well com- met come hither i to, and i will reveal to you my dark secret uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I move over to see his dark secret. Uh, get a little hotter. Getting hotter, he says as uh, you approach the machine. Uh, you realize the voice is coming from below this this machine. Okay, I look under the machine. You see a severed human head. Yeah. And it, go, it, it and the head like is just laying there because it's a head, and then its eyes open and it goes black. Magnus does not react. He says, I'm just kidding. No, I, that's fine. I, I've seen worse. I just you, fought a flying bear. Why would someone's head bother me? Would you actually mind fishing me out of here for a bit? I've been... Oh, I've yeah, been, of course. I've been, I've been chilling under here for a while, but I, I think we're good for now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I grab the head uh, in the most comfortable way. Po- I figure grabbing it by the hair is probably going to hurt. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, and, and this is so consistent because, once again, Magnus moves ahead. <laughs> that's kind of how the saying goes. I guess that's the catchphrase oh, I've yeah. been using for two years. Um. Uh, okay, so Magnus is now holding this this head, and it, a severed head it makes it sound like it's this grisly, bloody thing. It's just sort of like a human dude's head, mm-hmm. um, and it's not leaking, and he seems surprisingly vital for just a head. How um, much neck are we talking, Griffin? Uh, a very little neck, but he's wearing a uh, he's wearing a little uh, red skull cap, um, and he uh, he introduces himself as you're holding him. Uh, he says, uh, "Hey guys, uh, my name's Cam. Sorry, I I can't greet you with a formal handshake, but I, I seem <laughs> to have misplaced good. my my everything." I love um, it. What are you guys doing here? Oh, fighting bears. Oh, by the way, I recall my chance lands. Okay, <laughs> I'm you not pull it out of that shit. The site. He says, that's kind of rude to do that in the middle of a conversation, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, maybe, but would you rather I forget it? You seem like a stickler for rules, Cam. Uh, how's, your, how's your trip through Wonderland going? Oh, you know, I, it's fine. I lost a pinky. 
Oh, that's it? Again, oh, you lo- comparatively, oh, you- oh, sorry, like, sorry. I realize. You lost you know, a pinky? Listen, I get it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the worst. I'm talking to a head. Like, I get that there's worse that there's worse and, yeah. and you're standing next to a guy who got his arm chopped off yeah, he's able to check his privilege yeah, yeah i know yeah. what's up this sucks but like all things considered you know i i get it he i, uh, I know where i'm at uh cam the uh disembodied head starts sniffing um like a lot like like a bloodhound and he says um I'd uh, i'd love to tell you guys a, a little bit about me and sort of what i'm bringing to the table but first you wouldn't happen to have a certain tasty, spicy treat with you, would you? I, well, I felt like maybe that was a setup for taco that I was missing. Or jerky. I know it's jerky. Um, it smells you know like, gonna... and it smells preserved and delicious. Mm, what is that? <laughs> yeah, uh, taco's staying silent because honestly, fuck this head. He has zero patience for it. Uh, I've got some jerky here, my friend. Jerky is... Perfect. I can't swallow, but I can just chew on it for a long time and get that spicy taste. Seems yeah. like a waste. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not be so brazen. Hey, hey, let me flash forward to 30 seconds from now when we see chewed up jerky glops <laughs> just sloughing off of this dude's throat. No thank you, Sai. No. Let me just I get a little, some, let me get a little bit of that jerky. tasty, spicy meat. I give him a little jerky. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That is good stuff. Oh. He actually just spits. He just spits it out. That's good. Oh, that's <laughs> way better. Like a fucking cookie monster <laughs> eating cookies. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, "He says I like you guys. You guys seem like nice guys." Uh, what what brought you to Wonderland? Looking for a bell. A bell. That's right. Yeah. Must be a pretty fucking good bell. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, well, honestly, we know we know very little about the bell. It's called the Enema Bell, so we're not really sure what it That's does. That's not what you sound like, old man. That was a good joke, though. It Thanks. was good. It was solid. Um, I've been I've been here in Wonderland for. I have to move Dad's uh uh, uh Christopher Lloyd action figure that he keeps the to remind side. me back over. Okay, there we go. Um, I assume uh, I assume things aren't going so great. I was watching you fight. It seems like uh, well, I mean, you seem like you're still pretty vital. Um, but yeah, I mean, hold on, you're in the same room we are. I would say we are collectively doing a little bit better than you, Cam. Oh, I mean, I've been here for a long time, but I got screwed over. Um, but that's that's not important. Is this just your first room then? After the you did the wheel once and then you're here. So there's uh, there's still we did the wheel we did forsake yeah uh, oh see that was a that was such a no yeah we did trust yeah that was, I we did it. trust yeah I know yeah. what's up yeah that was a bad move you you guys you guys know you got to pick forsake every time no matter what right like that's that's one oh one st- anyway it's not important you guys seem like nice dudes and um I think I could I think I could help you out uh getting getting uh making making progress through Wonderland and facing less gnarly fights like the one you guys just had to get through. Um, how did, how, how would, does that sound good? Maybe you could scratch my back and I'll, sc- well, well, scratch the back of my hair and I'll scratch your whatever with my teeth. Anyway, this is not, uh, good. yeah, I'd rather not. Okay. I right, listen, I, I'm of the mind of, uh, you take help where you can get it, rustic hospitality and all that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, help yeah. us get ahead. Okay, that's if we're gonna do this, then we can't do that. You got just mine more was the, better. Yeah. Let's okay. Just well, can I do? Can I do one? Can I do one more? Can I do one do, more? You can do exactly one more, and then but I'll, give me some jerky for my for my. Discomfort. Okay, I give him, I give him a piece of jerky. <laughs> I think I think you're going to be an excellent teacher, and I can't wait to get to the head of the class. Mm. I think maybe you ought to let me carry him. No, nope. yeah, that that would actually be good. Um, I tuck him in my bag. Oh, <laughs> um, you have uh, a new companion with you named Cam, and you spend a little bit of time getting to know Cam. Um, and uh, uh, Cam has explains that he's been in Wonderland for a while now, uh, and uh, alludes to the fact that he got screwed over by uh, somebody that he brought that that he uh, traveled into Wonderland with. Uh, but he seems like a pretty knowledgeable source of information about this place. Um, so do you have any questions for Cam to sort of aid in your your journey I through do. This, this hazardous place? I do. Is it going to be a hey. joke about his head? No. Okay. 
Damn it. Now you got to think of a real question. Cam, how come we can't heal? Oh, well, that would defeat the point of this place, right? Like, you guys understand that this point place is just here to make you suffer, right? Yeah. We, we really didn't do our prep on this one. We just yeah. kind of got thrown in. I, I have I have two questions for you, Cam. Shoot. One, you mentioned uh, the first room. Is this just like a cycle, or is this one room, and then we do something different in the next room, and then something different? It's kind of like a cycle. It's one of those, what are they called? Endless cycles. Well, that I, sucks. I, yeah, guys. Like, I, I, there's no getting out of Wonderland. You're gonna. I don't know. You, you, you came here for a bell, and that's great and all, but you're, you're gonna die here, and they're gonna make you suffer just as much as possible before you do. It's the only no. reason why this place exists. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Listen. Um, why do people come here if that's the truth? Good question. They come here because they whatever treasure their heart desires is supposedly waiting for them here. But that that's that hasn't been my experience. Okay, so I, I have I have an, my second question. When we suffer or get angry, this like black fog comes out our mouths. Yeah. What is that? That's that's suffering, boss. Got it. Do you? How much do you guys know about liches? Uh, they let get me, stitches, on, ro- I think. <laughs> liches get stitches. Uh, <laughs> let me roll real quick, and I'll tell you how much I know. Yeah, roll an I arcane know 15 attack. out of 20. What'd you get? Uh, well, actually, with my modifier, it would be a... Ah, 21. I got okay. 16. Um, um, liches are like a pretty, like, deep magic like knowledge thing um sort of a forbidden thing think like horcruxes in the harry potter verse but taco with that role you definitely definitely know about liches a lich is basically um when a magic user uh, like a wizard or a sorcerer or a warlock um merges their like their soul like their very their their life essence with their magical power then um at the moment of their death, they sort of get a second life in a spectral form composed of just raw arcane energies. Um, and, and, and because of that, because it's sort of like real dark necromancy stuff, uh, it, is, it is super, super taboo. And not only that, um, most, most wizards who sort of go for this procedure and uh, uh, turn themselves into liches uh, when they die, uh, most of those procedures end in catastrophic failure because when they sort of combine themselves with just raw magic power, they sort of lose their minds uh, and they lose their their living identity completely and just sort of turn into this mindless being of wanton magical destruction. Um, so that that you know is what a lich is. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and so you relay all that. I know all this stuff, I guess you say, to the severed head. Here's uh, some things I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he says, he says I, I don't know if you guys have figured this out, but this place is run by two pretty powerful liches that um, aren't just sort of mindless beings. See, if a lich can... Um, can anchor themselves with a, a, a powerful enough sort of uh, emotional attachment, then then they can sort of maintain their their identity and they can maintain their sanity. And I wonder, have you guys ever witnessed like a magic that's kind of more powerful than you could explain? That was sort of born out of a moment of like intense passion or or emotion. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. We we have. Oh yeah, when I proposed to my wife, that's exactly what happened. You may not be wrong. There was some shit like that in uh, what was it? Rapture? What was the town we were in? Rapture? Yeah. So in in Rapture, you remember that Roswell was this like was that ele- the name of it? No shit, it wasn't. Fuck, it was rupture. Refuge. It was Rupture. It was refuge. called Refuge. Uh, refuge. Ros- Roswell was like an elemental that lived way beyond the person who made it and like had sentience and identity and was created by a f- like Jack, the, 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 the former mayor of the town as he was falling to his death, he created this thing. You also remember like, if you remember back in pedals to the metal, you remember that 
when Hurley jumped in and sort of uh, reversed Sloane's transformation, you never really could explain how that happened. Um, so so uh, Cam explains, he says, this is going to sound pretty cornball, but bear with me. There's a school of thought that powerful emotions are a form of energy, just as real as heat or light or magic. So a, a particularly strong fear or joy or fury or love, they're not just these cognitive effects. They have real actual power in the world around you. So using one of those emotional attachments, a lich can anchor themselves to their former identity, something like a powerful love or a determination or pure joy. Um, they can maintain their reason without losing themselves to the magical power that they've bonded themselves to. But somehow the two liches that run this place are empowering themselves not with their own emotion, but with the emotions of people who came into Wonderland, specifically suffering. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're here, and that's what they're going to get out of you, whether you like it or not. Got it. I Okay. Um, everybody step in the, in the pocket workshop real quick. What are you talking about? Dun, 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 uh, I, dun, I have dun, a thing. Dun, yeah. dun. So here's what I'm thinking, fellows. If Cam's right, and I have no reason to doubt him. I'm right. This, I'm right. He's in your back, I, I guess. I know. I'm including you in this, Cam. I know you're there. Then this is a rigged game, right? Yeah. So the only way to rig to win a rigged game is to change the game, right? Right. That, that's the Captain Kirk philosophy. Right. So I think I don't have anything specifically in mind right this second, but we need to keep our eyes open for an opportunity to change this shit around because I ain't getting trapped in another endless cycle. We did that in the last one. I'm not doing that again. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Cool. I have a question. Yeah, shoot. Is that a new band? Is that a new bandsaw? Did you get a new bandsaw? I did. did. I Thank you. That is not Black and Decker. Well, the other one just kept throwing the blade, and I just got oh, sick of it. There is. was something; it was a balance issue or something. That's I couldn't nice. get it. Said. Um, so That's here's nice. the thing: be careful so you don't lose another finger. Yeah, uh -huh. agreed. Taco, mm -hmm. I would like you to pick the word. That's going to be the word to let us all, like, let the four of us know that it's about to happen. That it's time to make our move. I'll come, yeah, for sure. Okay, you don't have you to tell us now. You can keep it and we'll just say a weird word and we'll know. Okay. No, oh, that's not a good Is that not, not how that works? No. no, he'll come up with all kinds of weird words. How about suedum? Perfect. Well, that's yeah. only going to be good if you listen to the last move in Bam. That's called a tie-in, uh, Griffin. Uh, how about banana stand Afghanistan? I, okay. didn't, I didn't ask you, Merle. Right, you didn't. Uh, 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 why? Okay, I talk kind of for a living, and I'm being tasked now with coming up with like a all single word. word. And, okay, I got it. The. Well, <laughs> hold on. Okay, that's not great either. How about saute? Perfect. Uh, that's good. Saute. Perfect. Perfect. And it fits the character. Fits saute, the character. yeah. Perfect. All right. Let's get back out there and let's fuck some shit up. Um. Do you think I could come with you guys? Fine, yeah. If I if I join your group, everything's gonna get just a little bit harder for you guys. You're gonna you're gonna have to sacrifice a bit more if I go with you. You're gonna have to take on my sacrifices because, well, look at me. I don't I don't really have anything else to give. Um so if if I come with you it it will be a bit harder, but I promise I can carry my weight, I can help you out with, with information and tips tips and tricks. So I have I have an idea. Yeah. Right now here in the pocket workshop, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a pocket dimension, right? Yeah, I don't know how I don't you're asking me, I don't know. Okay. I set his head down on the potter's wheel and I'm like, You hang out in here and we'll check in with you when we need you. That sounds great to me. Perfect. Uh, the Potter's wheel turns on, and he's like, "Don't, no, don't do this, don't do this, Whee! don't do this, no, don't do this, don't do this." Make like a high, make a hiney ho. <laughs> uh, okay, you guys moving on? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you make your way out of the pocket workshop, and uh, when you exit the the sort of uh, wall of the room that became a screen, now just has a big door in front of it, uh, in, built into it, and uh, this doorway is open, and beyond it, you see just more pitch black darkness um and as you move through that door 
uh, into the next chamber, it's a familiar sight because you see sort of the same boot up sequence as spotlights on the ceiling and floodlights on the floor cross uh, to point at a roulette wheel in the middle of the room. Uh, And the walls and the floor and the ceiling illuminate in these bright neon panels that change with this pulsating music. Um, And just beyond the the wheel is another uh, big stone door uh, that is shut until you make your sacrifices on the wheel. But this one has four dim red lights above it. Um, And the female elf's voice booms through the room. Uh, and she says, that's right, you're spinning the wheel again, only she's a bit hungrier this time. The sacrifices demanded will be a little bit brutal. Also, you've added another member to your party. I'm not really sure how you did that, but you'll need to complete four sacrifices if you want to pass on to the next chamber. (laughs) Hold on, I believe if you'll count, uh, you will find here, but... Yeah, do a quick head, do a quick head count. (laughs) You hear from another dimension, fucking cut it out! Shh, shh, shh. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet. Uh, what if we say no? I don't, I don't understand. Well, uh, what if we just don't? Then you would, then you lose. Well, I mean, yes, but I also like to know the parameters that I'm I'm just wondering, like, I get what the win scenario is. What's the lose scenario here? You don't get your... You just don't get your prize, and you let us go when we leave. Oh, that's no, it. Oh no, 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 cool. no, no, no. You got to Once you start through Wonderland, you have to finish. We can't finish, though, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you wouldn't just send us into something that we couldn't finish. Um, you hear? I don't. You hear? Guys, actually, I, tr- I trust this elf. I don't know. You hear um, some rustling, uh, like of paper. Uh, it says, "Let's see, let's see. If you if you finish, you'll end up getting." Oh, so that's your prize, huh? Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, you're making good progress. Let's see what you can do. Uh, And then you actually hear uh, the tinkling of a bell being rung. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Comedy, friendship, and creativity. All of this and more wait for you at Max FunCon. Join us for Max FunCon in Lake Arrowhead next June or Max FunCon East in the Poconos next September. Tickets for both events are on sale now, but they're going fast. Visit MaxFunCon.com to buy your tickets right now. From the dawn of time. One podcast has unlocked the secrets of science and technology to enrich the lives of billions. And now, after a year where they've unlocked the golden age of knowledge, they're about to hit warp speed and go stratospheric. Wait, hold up. On Ono, oh Ross, and Carrie, we don't make extraordinary claims. We investigate them. We go undercover with fringe religious groups, investigate paranormal claims, and we participate in pseudoscientific medical treatments and then report our findings to you. And yes, we've even investigated Scientology. Shh, Ross, shh. New episodes every month at MaximumFun.org. Oh no, Ross and Carrie. They show up so you don't have to.